live from Copenhagen, Denmark. It's the Cube covering KubeCon and Cloud Native Con Europe 2018. Brought to you by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's exclusive coverage of KubeCon 2018, the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, CNCF. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, my co-host Lauren Cooney is here with me this week. Our next two guests are from HPE Developer Program, Paul Holland, Director of Open Source uh, Program Office, and Saeed Said, Saeed Said, who's the head of HPE Developer Experience, um, CUBE alumni, welcome back, good to yeah, see thanks you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. So, first of all, New logo, love that, I want to get into it. <laughs> HPE Developer Program, we've had many conversations in the past, the relationship with Docker, the work you guys are doing inside the enterprises with cloud, multi-cloud, and hybrid cloud. Yeah. Why are you guys here? What's the story? What's the update from HPE? So, uh, in December we launched uh, this new program called the HPE Developer Community Program, and that's really focused on uh, reaching out uh, to the developers that are out there, uh, whether these are DevOps developers, uh, cloud native application developers, uh, IT ops developers who are looking to do integration with HPE uh, infrastructure as well as our software defined platforms. Uh, it's basically evangelizing all of the good work that HPE is doing in the open source program and, and other areas. Do uh, you want to add something? Yeah, I think part of it is people recogni the recognition that HPE is a software company is after all of the separations, the divestiture with HPI, then yep. microfocus, and we're left with really a lot of still developer power. And so it's that idea that as we work with developers internally and externally, we need to formalize that developer program, both inside of open source and the general developer, through our APIs and some of that coordination to really make the developer work. I mean, we're talking software defined everything now. You guys have been part of that, and you know, I, to give you guys some props, we've interviewed over the past four or five years, you guys were doing, talking microservices early on. That's right. Again, the enterprise has software defined oh yeah. systems. Right. You guys are a big part of that. So I got to ask you, the perfect storm is here. I mean, Kubernetes, which is on, on the scene, is now, at least in my opinion, the de facto standard mm -hmm. for interoperability around multi-cloud. This is the perfect storm for uh, a company as big as HP yeah. with all the customers. Right. So what is, I mean, you guys must be like sitting there going, Perfect timing. <laughs> what does it mean for you guys, Kubernetes? This is going to give you certainly a tailwind mm -hmm. for deployments and customer value creation. What's it mean internally for HPE? Well, I think Kubernetes is at the heart, as you mentioned, of, of the e open source ecosystem. It's about all of those Lego blocks now finally coming together with microservices and being able to put them together for an enterprise class workload. And given our history and our expertise there, I think you're right that it's a great opportunity to make sure that it works for the enterprise developer, for general developers, and how everything comes together within a, within a corporate world of development. You guys doubling down, I mean. Is Absolutely. It, what's, this, what's the story internally? Is it got the charter from uh, the top? That's right. Yeah, so we're definitely doubling down. I mean, we, you know, as you mentioned, we started early on with microservices, you know, with our partnership with Docker. We have a great relationship with Mesosphere. Uh, and we're full on with Kubernetes. You know, we have a product that we're actually demoing here on the show floor called HPE OneSphere. We launched the product in December of last year. And one of the things it actually does, it, it enables Kubernetes cluster management on-prem and off-prem, uh, you know, for example, in AWS. So deployment, management, all of those things. So we are full on. We also have uh, open source projects in, uh, in the Kubernetes landscape. Uh, it's called Project Dory. That enables persistent storage. Uh, uh, and there is, it's actually contributed by our Nimble uh, business unit. So yeah, we're, we're, in t we're very focused on enabling our developers. Uh, you know, things that, we, uh, you know, that, that, that enables them is things like, you know, how can I automatically deploy applications and so on mm -hmm. using a Kubernetes cluster, Kubernetes environment. So, you know, working with Paul and others, that's exactly what we're focused on. What are some on. of the use cases that you guys are seeing? As you mentioned, some of those deployments. Is it really kind of existing, you know, integration within HP mm -hmm. solutions like OneSphere? And OneSphere is obviously going to be a nice mm -hmm. pane of glass to look at the, you know, platform that's right. of, of what the cloud offers. Is it, Edge, is it IOT? I mean, what are some of the use cases? I think it's all of the above. I think we're, what we're seeing is legacy enterprises having all these legacy applications that they need to migrate to this new world. At the same time, they're struggling with how do then I make it hybrid? Yeah. How do I then go to the edge? And so across the board, and I think that's the power, going back to your original question around HPE, is we've yeah. seen all of, all of that in the enterprise. And can we put those proprietary componentry, the products, like a OneSphere, on top of open source components 
The reason we're here at Kubernetes is an example is to really highlight to developers that if you really want to bring things together, we can help you do that, whether it be legacy applications, new application, greenfield applications, all within this, again, Lego block type environment right. within Kubernetes and these other open source I mean, you guys platforms. were also, again, on the composable yeah. infrastructure uh -huh. kind of story, uh -huh. it's kind of here, right? That's I mean. right, yeah. <laughs> we're, 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 so again, you know, we, we started down this journey you know, three, four years ago with Docker and several others. We built this unified uh, uh, ecosystem, uh, composable ecosystem, and in, in, in the ecosystem, I think there are now like 40 some partners, uh, but, but that's growing. So if you, if you look at it from a you know, layered cake uh, point of view, the infrastructure is here, that problem has been solved for a long time. You have infrastructure management, so with one view, uh, with our composable APIs, working with uh, components like Docker and Mesosphere and Redfish and other, uh, other open source products and services. On top of that, with OneSphere as the multi-cloud, hybrid cloud management platform, again, using the power of our APIs, and then integrating northbound with these hybrid cloud, multi-cloud management environments, mm -hmm. as well as uh, southbound with infrastructure management, now you have the overall story. So we're really exploiting the power of APIs and enabling our, uh, our developers internally, as well as developers outside of HPE to kind of really come together and then start to think about you know, this, this new idea. Is there a solution for that? Absolutely, there's an app for it. And then yep. the way you build that app is build that API integration. So you talked about an app store that you guys are working on. It has some, about 40 different partners in it. What about users of the solutions that are in there? Are you seeing an uptick in that? And what are you seeing in terms of them? What are they using? Yeah, so uh, I'll give you a quick example. So we launched the developer community program in December. We launched the portal uh, in December. And in the past two and a half months, we have seen a significant uptick in actually just people coming in and, and hanging out on the portal. Uh, I think we are up to about 30,000 unique, uh, unique views of our page and most people are spending three to four minutes, which is a lot in today's terms. <laughs> Someone who's going there, talk, you know, reading our, uh, our, our content. And then on top of that, actually, you know, consumer, consumership of our projects. So Gromit, for example, is one of our open source projects that HPE funds, it's a UX front end. Uh, I think it has more than 10,000 uh, uh, people that are following it and, uh, and, and using it. Companies like Netflix, for example, use Gromit uh, as a UX. Most of our SDCG, software-defined yeah. applications, are now using Gromit. So OneSphere, OneView, that's our de facto standard, but it's open source. Anyone yeah. can use it. And are you finding, you know, HPE has traditionally been kind of a company that you know, is does a lot of things internally. Are you guys opening up for the first time, really, I would almost say, with, with allowing your developers to build things that will be put into open source, or yeah, I'm not can sure you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. yeah, I think the, the, the power of HP is we've had a rich collaboration history for a long, yeah. long time. And I think you alluded to it before, from an enterprise perspective, how can we make that easy, not only for our own internal developers, and maybe this is where the question comes from, from an internal perspective, but even, 10, 15 years ago with Martin Fink at the helm of the open source group, and then ultimately as the CTO, and things have shifted through the separations. But taking, how do you leverage that power of openness, collaboration that's in our DNA, and really empowering them to share? And so, how do we take concepts like inner sourcing, which is the open sourcing of activities inside a company, and really you start to develop those habits and capabilities, whether or not it's external is just a flip of the switch, but developers know how to co contribute. They're also learning best of breed skills and developing their own career over time. That is great And to then hear. enabling that yep. for other enterprises as well, yep. which is yep. really where a lot of customers come to us and say, hey, you're an enterprise with lots and lots of developers. How do I do the, get that same power with mine? Mm -hmm. And you kind of walk them through the journey. It's interesting, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. I think you guys are doing, first of all, I love the new logo. Yeah, and I you. think it's really important everyone knows that you guys have a very active and open source community. And have been on this, it's not like yeah. a new thing, a revelation within HP. But Intel has the same challenge. They're trying to move away from that Intel inside. You guys are known to a lot of people as a hardware company. Mm -hmm. And you got HP.com is now the printer and the peripheral side, but it's a cloud game. So That's yeah, right. you're still selling servers, but I mean, people are still buying servers. Well. The cloud <laughs> providers need servers, yeah. so they, yeah. you know, they need it. So, but the software is the key. The software-defined right. infrastructure is now the is that glue layer. Service meshes are hot. 
You're seeing Istio's got massive traction. Everything's pointing to this new level of services at scale. That's right. I want to get your thoughts on, 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 on the HP story there. Can you take a minute to explain what you guys are doing with that vision? Because cloud native isn't just about the cloud. There's a lot of on-prem yeah. activity mm -hmm. that's moving to a cloud operating mm -hmm. model. So it's not, it's not a full public cloud. Nope. What's your no. story? Well, I think from a, if you look at the overall strategy, it's around, we make hybrid IT simple, recognizing that it's all those different flavors. We have to enable the software capabilities because the world is software enabled. So you have all of those component trees working together seamlessly and automated. And then we have the services groups to, to make it happen. So with the point next and the acquisitions of cloud technology partners in the new areas, we have a wide variety of a portfolio of services that are now enabled and experts to actually go help customers do it. And so we have the capability legacy, we also have the capability of the new generation of IT and everywhere in between. And then you talk about the edge. And so with our acquisition of Aruba, which seems like a long time ago, it's just a few years, yeah. they've been an integral part of taking that from the data center all the way to the edge and in between. So I think we've got those multiple layers of hybrid IT. We have the software enabled activities, which definitely includes open source because you can't be software enabled without software and open source. And then from a service perspective, the wealth of depth of bench uh, in terms of and the- And OneSphere's the key product that, yeah. for you guys, that connects all this. Is that kind of where the momentum it's is? It's one of them. One of them, okay. Yeah. And then if you look at you know, some of the acquisitions we've made, CTP for example, Cloud Cruiser for example, the, these are all you know, helping us build our portfolio of rich services that enable customers to go from a pure on-prem, pure hardware focused you know, uh, company to now a new age cloud native uh, or hybrid cloud sort of company where you know, we have the experience now we have the experience with all of these different acquisitions like CTP to enable them to have a full hybrid cloud uh, micro plus macro services kind of migration capabilities. What are you guys offering developers? Not that you're going to ask you for the pitch because everyone, the developers are now getting a lot of pitches if you will and, <laughs> and people say I got to own the developer. They don't want to be owned, they want to be collaborative. Right. But they're closer to the front lines than ever these developers mm -hmm. and they're really looking at business problems. It's not just here's the specs, go, go code it. They're on the front lines, at the, right at the point of engagement mm -hmm. for the business logic and the business models of a lot of these applications. So what do you guys bring to the table for the developer? Is it marketplace, is it uh, distribution, is it opportunity? What is the value proposition that you guys are talking to developers about specifically? I, th I think it's, it's, all, it's all three. So we start, we really start with internal, right? So we are aligning our internal developers to really consume our own Champagne, you know, so you drink your own champagne. So for, so what does that mean? Well, can you use OneSphere to develop OneSphere? Absolutely. So our mentality is our OneSphere developers, and in fact, a couple of our distinguished technologies are here. So more customer focus. So do your development on your own products, on your own products. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's number one, right? So if they go through the pains of developing on our own products, they will know exactly where, which areas to focus on. And so that's one thing that we are really uh, you know, enabling our developers to do, is really think outs outside in versus inside out. Right? You know, gone are the days of we'll build it and they will come. No, they won't. You yeah. have to really give them what they are going to consume. So from a strategy perspective, we're really exposing our developers to the outside world. Hey, go out there, talk to them learn what they're looking for, right? So that's number one. Number two, uh, with the developer community program and the developer uh, portal and the open source program, now that we're collaborating across HPE at the top end and the bottom end, we're not really able to think about how we use the power of our APIs from, from layer one, you know, infrastructure, all the way up to layer seven, uh, or layer five and above, and say, all right, how do we enable these guys to build value at that really solves their problem, whether it's DevOps problems, or, you know, CICD, mm -hmm. whether it's deploying applications, managing, monitoring applications, it's all through the Power API. If you can automate it, orchestrate it, and manage it, then we have really solved your problem. So this is why we're not only going after and enabling the developers by giving them what they need, we're also partnering with key partners in our ecosystem that actually brings the best of breed 
and that's what the customers uh, are, are used to using today. Yeah, and you guys got to move up the stack, certainly at the application yeah. level exactly. is a key, po key point. Exactly. What about the um, channel opportunity? Because I'm seeing, and I've been talking about this on, on theCUBE lately, is developers are the new, are the new sales channel. <laughs> because you know, in the old days, you know, VARs and ISVs and yeah. channel partners would bring solutions, and you guys had a great channel, have a great channel yep. that brings solutions yep. to customers. Yep. Now these customers are having programming and developing done from the partners. Yep. So you guys have to create that. Are you guys looking at that as a significant opportunity with, the, with this program? Well, I think in today's world, you have to think about things in a different way, and I think with the advent of DevOps, mm -hmm. right, the developers are no longer in their cubes, not touching production, they're releasing the production daily, or regular, or multiple times per day. And so we're looking at, and we have looked at that with how does the developer work and get that all the way to production. At the same time, what's the skill sets to work within the open, right? You talk about the channel. The open source community is a great channel, not only for ideas and conversations, but also to meet people. Yeah. Because not only are we- Your buyers are there. Yeah, exactly. That's right. We're releasing to customers, but customers is part of our community. Vendors are part of our community, partners are part of our community, and together we're building a community of, of developers that are doing work that ultimately goes to production regular, multiple times yeah, every you, week. If you guys get this right, it's, the gains will be huge. Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the lar largest web companies in the world, you know, we, we, we're partnering with them, you know, they're a huge customer of ours. Uh, instead of selling to their front line, we went and sp started talking to their developers and their developer leaderships. In, to the point where we actually are working on joint hackathons. So yeah. our developers, their developers, yeah. in the same conference room, solving joint problems together. So co-development. Yeah. Co-developing, exactly. Nice. We call it a hackathon, but yeah, uh, co-developing, absolutely. Yeah. So the, that's, that's where we're focused, where, you know, because today, developers and the line of businesses have more and more and more influence on key technology decisions. Yeah, right. That's where the money is. Being genuine and, and authentic in these communities is certainly exactly. great, successful formula. You guys see that. We'll be following your progress. Thanks for coming on theCUBE and share and the update and congratulations on the new program and the new logo. Uh, love to get a shirt. Uh, yeah. We get a chance. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Great, congratulations. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. Thanks, thanks for coming thanks on. For us. Uh, we are here at uh, KubeCon 2018 in Europe. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more live coverage after this short break.